Good afternoon. We are on the topic of solving trigonometric equations using trig identities. Now let us start with question one. In question one, we are given that sine theta minus cos theta equals to one. Now there's two ways or at least two ways to solve this equation. Now one way is I can make use of the trig identities sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Then I express sine theta as 1 plus cos theta and I substitute that into the identity. Another method is I square both sides. Now method 1 is a better method, but I will do that in, for question 2. Now for question 1, I will just square both sides. So what you get for, if you square both sides is, this is you get sine squared theta plus cos squared theta minus 2 sine theta cos theta equals to 1. Now, theta is between 0 and 180. Now careful, this is not inclusive of 180. Now, the formula here is, there's an identity where cos squared plus sine squared is 1. So you bring that across, and then you have 2 sine theta, cos theta, equals to 0. Okay, now you can put sine theta equals to 0 or cos theta equals to 0 or you can make use of the identity sine 2 theta equals to 0 because 2 sine theta cos theta is sine 2 theta. Now, uh, you, if you remember the Cosine function, all right. Now, for uh, I mean the sine function, this is zero. This is uh, this is one hundred eighty. I mean one hundred eighty, and this is three sixty. Now, so what are the values for theta? Two theta will take on zero. 180 or 360 implies that theta is 0, 90 or 180. Now because 180 is not part of, it doesn't fall within this inequality. So this one we reject. All right. Now this is not the final answers. Now because we square this, all right, we square the equation. If we square an equation, we might generate more solutions. So what we do is we need to substitute, put this two solution inside and check whether does it satisfy the equation or not. Now you put zero in as zero for theta. So sine zero is zero cos zero is one so a minus one is equal to one so this one we reject okay then we put 90 inside sine 90 is one cos 90 is zero so this one satisfy this equation now you may be wondering why when we square both sides there are uh, extra solutions generated. Let me just show you. Let's say y is equal to 1. And then you square both sides. You got y square is equal to 1. Now you square root both sides. y is equal to plus minus 1. All right. But your original statement was y equals to 1. All right. So you have to check. All right. That's why you need to check back. Okay. 
Now let's move on to question two. Now for question two, you are given two sine square x plus three cos x minus three is equals to zero. x is between 0 and 2 pi. Alright. Now, what we can do is we put, now you have this uh, identity. Alright. Maybe I use a different color. You have sine squared x plus cos squared x is equals to 1. Okay, so you can substitute sine squared as 1 minus cos squared. Okay, so you got 2 into 1 minus cos squared x plus 3 cos x minus 3 equals to 0. Okay, then you expand this. You have 2 minus 2 cos squared x plus 3 cos x minus 3 equals to 0. Okay, let's simplify this. Okay. Now, I, I prefer working with a positive uh, cos squared term. So, I bring this over to the other side. So, I have 2 cos squared x minus 3 cos x. Now this is minus 1, so you, I bring over to the other side, it will be a plus 1, equals to 0. Now, let's try to factorize this. 2 cos x cos x. Alright, I want a minus 3 and I want a plus 1 here, so this will be a minus 1, minus 1 equals to 0. Okay. Now, then what do I have? I have cos x is equals to half. Or cos x is equals to 1. Okay. Now, what are the values of this for this? I have x is equals to now, half is a special angle. You cos inverse half is 60 degrees, but this is given in pi. 60 degrees is pi over 3. That's the first quadrant. Cos is also positive in the fourth quadrant. So you have 2 pi minus pi over 3. So you have 5 pi over 3. Okay. Now, so you have cos x is 1. Now, cos function, how does it look like? Okay. Now, the cos function. Okay. So, it's 1 at 0 and 2 pi. 0 and 2 pi. Okay. So, x is equals to 0 or 2 pi. Oh, I use a different color. Now the question is, do we really need to substitute these four solution into the given equation to check whether it's satisfied? Now, there's no necessity. Why? Because in this equation, did we purposely go and square both sides? We did not. Is different from question one. Now, go back to the beginning of the lesson. I also mentioned that for question one, there's two ways to solve it. One way is I express sine theta as one plus cos theta. And then I substitute one plus cos theta into sine squared theta 
plus cos squared theta equals to 1. That means I substitute this into here. Okay. Now this is a better solution, all right, a better way to solve question 1. Now, why is this so? Now you notice that in this question, cos theta and sine theta has the, the coefficient of sine theta and cos theta are the same. So if you square it, all right, you will have sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, and then you can just group it. Now, if we try to use this method, all right, squaring both sides on a question like, take for example, I just modified this on a question like 2 sine x plus 3 cos x is equals to 3. Now, if we square both sides, what, what will we get? You will have 4 sine squared x plus 9 cos squared x plus 12 sine x cos x equals to 9. Now you can't, no matter how you group, all right? I mean 4 sine squared plus 4 cos squared is 4, okay? So you have 4 plus 5 cos squared x plus 12 sine x cos x equals to 9. And then you can't simplify anymore. Alright, so it's rather, uh, this is a better way. Alright, but I've shown this to you so that you are, you, there's more option and you understand the thing better. Okay, let's move on to question 3 and 4. Question 3. Question 3, you are given cos 2 theta minus cos theta equals to 0. Now, they are unlike terms, although they are related. Now, we can use the identity of cos 2 theta is equals to 2 cos squared theta minus 1. So you have 2 cos squared theta minus 1 minus cos theta is equals to 0. All right. Now, by the way, theta is between 0 and 2 pi. All right. So we have come to a quadratic equation. Let us rearrange it. So you have 2 cos squared theta minus cos theta minus 1 equals to 0. Now let us try to factorize this. You have 2 cos theta. This is cos theta as well. Now you have minus cos theta. So this must be minus 1. This must be plus 1. Now, you have cos theta is equal to minus half and cos theta is 1. So, you cos inverse of min uh, half, what do you get? You get pi over 3. All right, this is a special angle. Now, pi over 3 is a basic angle. Now, because cos is, maybe I just do it, huh? so it's equals to pi over 3. Now, this is the basic angle. Cos theta is negative, so it is in the second and third quadrant. So, theta, for second quadrant, you use pi minus pi over 3, you got 2 pi over 3. Now for the third quadrant, all right, you are you will be pi plus pi over three because theta is in the uh, second and third quadrant. So you have five pi over three. 
Now, how about this? Now, for cos theta equals to 1, you can look at the cos function. All right. So it is equals to 1 when this is 0, when this is 2 pi. Okay. So you will include 0 and 2 pi. This is for these two. Huh? Now let's move on to question 4. Now for question 4, you are given cos x is equals to 2 minus 2 sin x. And x is between 0 and 360. Now, what to do for this? This you can make use of sin squared plus cos squared equals to 1. Okay. Now from here, cos x is equals to 2 minus 2 sin x. So you substitute, you substitute this into your cos squared equation. So you have sin squared x plus 2 minus 2 sin x squared is equals to 1. Okay. So let's expand this. You have sine square x plus 4 plus 4 sine square x. Square of this times 2. All right, this times this times 2 is minus 8 sine x is equals to 1. Let's uh, simplify this. You have 5 sine square x minus 8 sine x plus 3 equals to 0. Now let us try to factorize this. You have sine x, 5 sine x here and sine x. You want to... Eight. So this is minus 1 and this is minus 3. Okay, you got 0. So now then what do you get from here? You have sine x is equals to 3 over 5 or 1. Now, if what's the values of x, alright? I leave that to you. I will just, you can use it on the calculator, alright? You can just calculate that. You get x is equals to 36.9, 143.1, and 90. Now, you have to substitute back into the original equation to check. Now, you, please why look at this you put this into this equation all right cos cos x is equals to 2 minus 2 sine x into this cos square x so you are actually actually square the cos x so this might generate extra solution so you must sub substitute all the three values of x put the value of x into this equation and check whether does it uh, whether the left hand side equals to the right hand side now if you do that you find that this one doesn't satisfy the original equation so we reject this 
Alright, so your final solution is x is equals to 36.9 or 90. Okay. For that, we have come to the end of this lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. If you like our video, please press the subscribe button.